Hello, I'm John Kneebone and welcome to Mainline Baits Coral Fishing TV, where today you join me on the banks of Jennett's Reservoir down in Devon. It's an eight acre lake, there's no night fishing, it's days only, and it's got a lovely stock of fish, lots of mid-doubles, there's some twenties, there's even a couple of thirties. The fish has already been pretty active today, we haven't had the rods out very long, we've seen fish showing, and as you can see, we're already into one. So I'm gonna try and concentrate on getting this one in the net and hopefully we can go through our day session tactics. Well, we almost got this fish in the net, but we may have had a double take. The left hand rod is uh, bleeping away. I have got a solid bag on that left hand rod and there are some bream and silverfish in here. So it may be a bream, it keeps dropping back. I don't mind nuisance fish when you're on a day session because you are going to be recasting and feeding throughout the day. But right now, we're just going to concentrate on the one that we've got hooked. Looks like he's starting a tire now. Looks like a typical Gen X common. Long and lean, but hard fighting. He doesn't want to give up. Here he goes, took a big gulp of air then. Over that net, yes! There we go, first one of the day, and it didn't take long at all. Nice little common. Right, let's hit this other rod. Here he comes. One of the Janet's brain. Thought we might have had a double take then, but. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on. In you come. Yeah, I know you like the pellets. Right, let's unhook this one. In the water. I'm not afraid to say I've touched a bream. <laughs> Let's let him go. Right. Go and have a word with the car. That's what we want. There we go. Lovely little Jennet's coming. Come alongside that bream. So make sure you leave your bream bants in the comments box below. But it didn't take long to get this take. In fact, it didn't even give me time to let you know there's going to be a giveaway in this video. So make sure you watch to the end for details on how you can win a day session bait bundle. But for now, we'll get this one back, get the rods back out, hopefully catch them more, and hopefully take you through the tactics that we're using. Okay, a day session is like any other session when it comes to what's the most important thing, and of course, that's location. But time is of the essence when you haven't got much time on the bank during the day. So the first thing that I would do is look for visual features to fish to. Luckily here at Genets, there's loads of them. There's reeds, there's lily pads, and those marginal features go into overdrive when you look at that far bank that I'm fishing to in this swim. We've got overhanging trees, there's no swims over there, there's not even a path. It's the perfect place for the carp to be patrolling up and down. I can get my rigs over there. I don't need to use a marker rod or anything like that. I'm keeping the disturbance down. And most importantly, I'm getting fishing quickly. And that worked out a treat this morning because it didn't take long to get that first carp on the bank. So that's location. Now let's take a look at the baits that we're using. 
So I've brought a few different baits with me today and you'll notice that there's a bit of a running theme that they're very high track baits. And the reason for that is obviously we're looking to get bites as quickly as we can, but I'm also looking to induce bites if the action slows or anything like that. If I find one thing that works, then I can keep both my rods fishing on that approach. So first thing I've brought with me is some boilies. I've got the new Choco boilies in the high impact range. Lovely food source boilie. It's perfect for the autumn time of year that we're fishing in at the moment, but it's also got a lovely attractor in there. It's gonna pull those fish in. And then to go with those boilies, I've also got some balanced wafters, which is what we had the first fish on today. And then I've also got some pop-ups as well. There's a lot of debris over on the fire bank, leaves dropping off of those trees. If I feel I need to be a little bit further off the bottom, I've got some pop-ups. And then just to keep on that pop-up theme, I've then got some high-vis pineapple pop-ups. I mean, these pop-ups, they just cash fish after fish off of lots of different venues. And I think a lot of the time, it's because they're so bright, they're so attractive, they can just get that little bit of investigation off the fish, just out of curiosity. And it's a really good bait to have in the bag, just in case you want to cast at a showing fish. To tie up with that and further boost the attraction of that hurt bait, I've got a bait spray to go with that. And then moving away from the boilies, I've just brought some pellets with me. So I've got, some spot and PVA pellet, little bag of response pellets. And while I was preparing for the trip at home yesterday, I did tie up some solid PVA bags. So I'm fishing one rod on a solid PVA bag. Now, as you've already seen, there's some bream in this lake. And ordinarily I wouldn't fish a pellet where there's, there's bream in, within the stock, but I'm casting quite regularly. It's a day session. I'm casting here, there, trying to get those bites. And if I, pick up a bream while I'm doing that, it's not too detrimental. And those bream, you never know, they might encourage those carp to come in and see what's going on. So just to put a little bit of ground bait at the end of that bag, um, I've got the Cloud9 ground bait, and then I can also use this ground bait if I want to ball up some pellets and feed them into the margins. And then finally, we're moving on to possibly what is the most important thing on a short session when you're talking about attraction, and that is a liquid. I've got a couple of liquids. I've got the hook bait enhancement system dip that matches up to the Choco boilies. And then of course, I've got the smart liquids. Very unique reaction in the water, these smart liquids. They will pull fish into your swim, down onto your spot, and trust me, these liquids will catch you more fish. All these baits are shelf life, so if we don't use them on this trip, we can bring them on the next one. Bang on the money. Right, it's been a little bit quiet since that first fish, so what I'm doing now, just putting a few baits out with the throwing stick, just trying to liven up my swim a little bit. Some fresh smell, some fresh attraction, try and get them fish in and, and mooching about. A day session, it's a bit different to when you're fishing an overnight 24 or 48 hour session. For those types of session, you might put out quite a lot of bait when you get there, say 10, 15 spawns of bait, and you're waiting until first light or bite time the next day to reap the rewards. We haven't got that sort of time. So we're not putting out a lot of bait in one go. We're putting out small amounts of bait, little and often. It keeps the fresh smell out in that water, bit of attraction, and hopefully, just putting out a few baits, any time it's quiet, only a dozen or so of those choco boilies, hopefully that'll bring some fish back into our swim and we could be in for some more action. just goes to show, put in those few baits with the throwing stick, just to freshen up the swim a little bit, just see if we can provoke a little bit of action. And within a few minutes, the left hand rod has bleeped away and we're into another fish. 
And this fish is just trying to kite to my left just a little bit, so I do need to be careful. There's quite a few anglers on, and uh, I don't want to take out a row of lines, so I'll try and concentrate on what I'm doing. Hopefully, we'll get another Genix fish in to show you. Well, look at that. You can probably hear the other alarms going. Second double take of the day. Let's just hope this double take is two carp and not a bream. This one's nearly ready for the net. Oh, it's all two and eights. The temptation is to panic, but the thing to do is try your best to just stay calm, get one in the net, and then hopefully, hopefully get the second fish in. Well, that was a bit like that. The fish is, uh, it's not kited to the left and the right. Like I say, I've never seen the lake so busy, but all the lakes are quite busy at the moment. And I've got rods to my left, rods to my right. I don't want to wipe anybody out. It's horrible when that happens. But, like I say, just getting that attraction back in the water. It didn't take a much. A dozen boilies. It might even have been the sound of the boilies, just hitting the surface and dropping down through the water. That just provoked those carp coming into my swim. And as quick as that, we've hooked up with two fish. Right, that's enough yap. I'm gonna need to concentrate now because somehow, I'm gonna need to get two in the same net. Here we go, big gulp of air. Let's see if I can manage to get this way. Go on in. Yes, there we go. Well, I was hoping for some uh, quick bite action today. Genix is a good lake for this. We've sort of picked the right venue to begin with. Um, and as you can see, we've got another couple of carp in the net. Let's get them out and see what we've got. Well, there we go. There's the first of those two commons and a hectic five minutes and a double take. Hopefully I've redeemed myself for a double take with a bream. If you think I have, please write that in the comments box below, especially if you give me some grief about that bream earlier on. But yeah, really pleased with this. Tactics coming together. I'm enjoying myself and that's all you can ever ask for. Let's get this one back and take a look at the other one. Well, there we go. Here's fish number two of that double take. Probably the biggest one that we've had so far today. So let's get him back, see if we can try and catch a bigger one and have a quick look at the rig and presentation that I'm using. Okay, so let's take a look at the presentation that's been successful today. Very simple one. I've got a lead core leader. You could use tubing if you wanted to. That's come down to a lead clip system. I've then got an anti-tangle sleeve that's going over a quick change swivel so that I can change my rigs really quickly. And then for any of you that have been watching our how-to series of videos, you'll recognize this rig as the simple wafter rig. Very easy to tie, and if you'd like to know how to tie it, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. So basically, it's a curved shank hook hair rig. I've got a 15 mil Choco balance wafter on there, and then just to increase the drag of the rig in the flight of the cast and help prevent tangles, I've got a little bag of three Choco boilies there hooked onto the hook. That'll also leave a little bit of feed around the hook bait, and then just to boost that attraction even more, we've just got a little dollop of the Fruit Smart Liquid on there. That's the winning presentation. I've dropped the PVA bags now. We're just getting bream after bream after bream. 
Initially I thought, well, that might be a good thing that may attract the carp in, but now I think it's more detrimental. So we've dropped that. We're keeping with this rig for now. Let's get this one out and see if we can get another bite. Perfect. Casting accuracy is always a vital part of any session, especially here when I'm fishing to a far margin. I needed my rig to be as tight as possible to that feature, and by using the clip on my reel, I was able to wrap up the rod at 16 wraps and drop that rig right on the money, tight to the feature and ready for a bite. It's then equally important to allow your line to sink slowly, taking your time before attaching the bobbin, just to ensure you don't drag your lead and rig back down the marginal slope. By using the throwing stick, I was then able to dispatch some bait to that far margin with no disturbance, all nice and stealthy, zinging them baits close to the surface so that they would drop close to the feature and the overhanging canopy. Okay, it's nearly time to call it a day. Just trying to string out a few more minutes, just see if we do get one last fish on the bank. And maybe one way just to try and keep the rods in a little bit longer is give you the details of the giveaway we mentioned at the start of the video. This session has all been about attraction and attractor bait, so to enter into the competition, simply go to the comments box and tell us your favorite mainline attractor bait or liquid attractor from the mainline range. And you could be in with a chance of winning a day session bait bundle that will include some of the Choco boilies that I've used today, along with some hook baits and a dip We'll put in some smart liquid as well. And you know what? We'll put in some pellets as well to give you everything you need for a higher track day session approach. If you'd like to find out more about Genets and the other lakes controlled by the Southwest Lakes Trust, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. I've thoroughly enjoyed my day here today. And if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that notification button so you know when our next video is coming out. If you don't yet subscribe to the channel, please hit that subscription button below. It's really important. And if you'd like to watch more in-session videos or how-to videos, such as the simple wafter rig, I'll leave links to those here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.